You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on Newton's Laws. The topic of this video is Proportional Reasoning with Newton's Second Law. Here's the question we wish to answer. What effect does the doubling, tripling, or halving of the net force or of the mass have upon the acceleration experienced by an object? Let's get started. In an earlier video, we discussed Newton's second law of motion, and in that video we learned that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force that acts upon it, inversely proportional to the mass of the object, and in the same direction as the net force. Put in another way, we could say that if the individual forces acting upon an object are not balanced, then the object's going to accelerate, and that acceleration depends upon the net force in a directly proportional manner and upon the mass in an inversely proportional manner. Here's what is meant by saying that the acceleration is directly proportional to the net force. As you see in the data table, that if we double the F net, the acceleration gets doubled. And if we triple the F net, the acceleration gets tripled. And if we half the net net, then the acceleration gets halved. Put another way, by whatever factor the F net is changed, the acceleration is changed by the same factor. We sometimes express this as a proportionality statement, saying that the acceleration is proportional to the F net. That's what that little fish symbol means. Or we state it as an equation, where acceleration is equal to k times F net, where k is a constant of proportionality. So now we're going to apply this principle that by whatever factor the F net is changed, the A is changed by the same factor. We're going to apply it in order to find the acceleration values for row 5, 6, and 7 in this table. If we look at row 5, the F net of that row is one half the F net of row 4. So the acceleration of row 5 is going to have to be one half the acceleration of row 4. So we take the 2 meters per second squared of row 4 and we half it to get the acceleration of row 5. If we look at row 6, we notice that its F net is one half the value of row 3. The acceleration for row 6, therefore, must be one half the acceleration of row 3. So we take the 12 meters per second squared of row 3 and we half it to get the acceleration of row 6. Finally, if we look at row 7, the F net there is two times the F net of row 2. So to find the acceleration of row 7, we take the row 2 F net and we multiply it by 2. That gives us 16 meters per second squared. You can see now how we use this principle that by whatever factor the F net is changed, the A is changed by the same factor. Now it's your turn to practice with this idea that by whatever factor the F net is changed, the acceleration is changed by the same factor. So here's two practice problems. Why don't you pause the video, solve the problems, and when you're ready, press play, and we'll talk about it. Okay, in this first question, we have to pay attention to some details. First of all, the original acceleration is 16 meters per second squared, and we learned that the F net is doubled. So if the F net is doubled, we have to double the acceleration. The new acceleration will have to be two times the 16 meters per second squared. That gives us 32 meters per second squared. For the second question, the acceleration, the F net is tripled. So what we'll have to do is triple the acceleration. Tripling 16 meters per second squared gives us 48 meters per second squared. Now here's two more chances to practice. Pause the video, answer the questions, and then press play. In this first question we see here, the F net is half. So we'll have to take the 16 meters per second squared acceleration and we'll have to half the acceleration. That gives us a value of 8 meters per second squared. And in the second question, what we notice is that the F net is one third of the original value. So we'll have to take the 16 meters per second squared and find out what one third of it is. It comes out to be 5.3 meters per second squared when we round it to the first decimal place. That's how you use the principle. By whatever factor the F net is changed, the acceleration is changed by the same factor. Now we're going to look at this concept that the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass. As you see here in this data table, when the mass is doubled, the acceleration is halved. And when the mass is tripled, the acceleration becomes one-third of the original value. And when the mass is halved, the acceleration is doubled. So, by whatever factor the mass is changed, the acceleration is changed by the reciprocal factor. We sometimes state this like a, with a proportionality statement, like A is proportional to 1 over mass, or as an equation, 
a equal k divided by mass, where k is a constant of proportionality. Now we're going to use this principle that by whatever factor the mass is changed, the acceleration is changed by the reciprocal factor. We're going to use the principle to fill in the acceleration for rows 5, 6, and 7. We'll focus on row 5 first. In row 5, the mass is one half the mass of row 4. And so if the acceleration changes by the reciprocal factor, we'll have to take the 24 meters per second squared of row 4, and we'll have to double it. We get 48 meters per second squared. Now let's look at row 6. Its mass is one half the mass of row 3. So to find the acceleration of row 6, we'll have to take the reciprocal of a half, that is, we'll have to take 2, and we'll have to double the acceleration of row 3. That gives us 8 meters per second squared for the row 6 acceleration. Now if we look at row 7, one thing we notice is its mass is twice the mass of row 2. The reciprocal of twice, or 2, is 1 half. So to find the row 7 acceleration, we'll have to take the row 2 acceleration and half it. That gives us 1 half of 6, or 3 meters per second squared. So you see that once we find the ratio by which the mass is changed, we can take the reciprocal ratio and change the acceleration by that reciprocal factor. Now it's your turn to practice with this idea that by whatever factor the mass is changed, the acceleration is changed by the reciprocal factor. So pause the video, solve these two problems, and when you're ready, press play and we'll talk about it. Okay, in this first question, we notice that the original acceleration is 60 meters per second squared, and the mass is doubled. Now, the reciprocal of doubling is halving, so we have to take the 16 meters per second squared, and we have to halve it to get 8 meters per second squared for the first question. For the second question, we notice that the mass of the object is tripled, so the reciprocal of tripling is 130. So we take the acceleration of 16 meters per second squared, and we take one-third of it. We multiply by 1 over 3. That gives us 5 3.3 meters per second squared. All right, let's try it again. Here's two more problems. Pause the video. When you're ready, press play. Now, in this first question, we notice that the mass is halved. The reciprocal of a half is doubling. So we have to take the 16 meters per second squared, and we have to double it. We get a new acceleration of 32 meters per second squared. And in this last question, the mass is one-third of the original value. The reciprocal of one-third is tripling. So we have to take the 16 meters per second squared, and we have to triple it. Tripling 16 gives us 48 meters per second squared. That's the new acceleration. On occasion, you'll get situations where both variables are changed. For instance, you see here, the F net is tripled and the mass is doubled. So in a situation like this, you have to take the 16 and you'll have to make two changes to it. You'll have to triple the 16 since the F net is tripled, and then you'll have to double the 16 since the mass is halved. When you're done, you end up with 96 meters per second squared. A couple of recommendations are in order. When you get a question such as this, first thing you want to do is take your time. And the second thing you want to do is begin to write some things down. Write down the original value for acceleration and write down the two multipliers. That's how you get this one done. It's at this time in every video I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps to make this learning stick. But before I do, could I ask you to help us out? First, if you like the video, could you give us a like or subscribe to our channel? And once you do, tap the bell and get notifications when new videos come out. And there's a place to leave questions and comments down below. Help yourself. Now, here's your action plan. At our website, we have a series of concept builders. One of the best ones that you could do as a follow-up to this activity is the Newton's Second Law, Equations as a Guide to Thinking. You'll see links to that in the description down below. Second, we have a mind series of Minds on Physics app. And if you go to our website, you'll see a link below. You can get app number two. You might want to try Mission NL8 or even NL7 in the Newton's Laws module. Finally, we have a tutorial on our website. It's a great way to freshen up on a topic. Whatever you do, we wish you the best of luck.